Throughout many long years, Japan was home to powerful ninja clans. These clans engaged in fierce battles against one another, each vying for total control over the entire country. These battles were characterized by extreme violence and resulted in a significant amount of loss of lives. The sheer negativity and hostility emanating from these acts of brutality grew so potent that it attracted malevolent beings from the depths of hell itself. These wicked creatures invaded Japan and took hold of its people, sowing chaos and despair wherever they went. Recognizing the immense danger posed by these demonic forces, the shinobi clans made a pivotal decision. They chose to set aside their internal conflicts and join forces in a collective effort to safeguard humanity. It was during this crucial moment that a divine being from the celestial realm made a remarkable appearance before the shinobi. This deity divulged to them the existence of an ancient trial, a test that, if successfully completed, would grant them extraordinary abilities capable of banishing the demons back to the infernal realm they came from. Knowing that the demons would remain a threat in the future, the surviving shinobis realized how urgent the situation was. They joined forces and created a new group called the Crimson Star Empire, led by their respected leader, the Crimson Head. With the help of a divine being, the empire was separated from the regular passage of time and entrusted with the crucial task of protecting the First Flame. The First Flame contained a sacred and immensely powerful energy. This energy had the ability to break the seal that held captive the fearsome demon god known as the Fallen. It was believed that by safeguarding this holy flame, the Crimson Star Empire could prevent the Fallen from being released upon the world once again. Even in the present day, there are whispers and rumors that the ongoing conflict between the opposing forces, the ninja and the demons, continues to unfold in secret, concealed from the knowledge of ordinary people. In this present time, on a peaceful and quiet night, there is a man walking steadily towards an enormous building. He carries a bag that leaves a disturbing trail of blood behind him as he moves. With a clear intention, the man lowers himself to the ground in front of someone he considers his superior, whom he respectfully calls his lord. He informs the Lord that he has successfully completed the task assigned to him. Curious and interested, the Lord asks about the fate of the person involved in the task. In response, the man opens the bag, revealing severed arms and confidently states that the injuries inflicted on the target are severe, implying that their survival chances are slim. Upon hearing this, the Lord decides to direct a group known as the Cells to find the target and ensure his demise. The man is confused and curious about the cells and what they do. The Lord, who knows how important it is to keep things secret, explains that the cells are on a super secret mission that no one, not even the clan leaders, should know about. The man thinks about it some more and wonders if he can ask a different question instead. He wants to know why the Lord specifically chose him to confront someone who is stronger and someone who even trained him. The Lord answers by saying that the person they're going after has become obsessed with power and has abandoned his own family and everything he promised to protect in his quest to become the leader of the clan. The Lord recognizes that Yasuke is capable of protecting the weak and overcoming all sorts of challenges and obstacles. Yasuke is shocked and can't find any words to say in response to this revelation. Going into more detail about the situation, the Lord elaborates on the beliefs and actions of Yasuke's master, who was known as Night Hand. Night Hand held the belief that by using his sword to consume the souls of demons, he could gain more power and strength. However, Night Hand was unaware of the harmful effects associated with this practice, as it would eventually consume both the wielder of the blade and their soul with negative energy. Despite the inherent danger, Yasuke managed to overcome Night Hand and emerge victorious. Recognizing Yasuke's remarkable achievement, the Lord announces that he will now be granted the esteemed title of Clan Head 2, a position of great honor and responsibility. To ensure a smooth transition, the Lord instructs Yasuke to visit his wife and tend to personal matters. Additionally, the Lord arranges a meeting with the cells with the intention of resolving and concluding the ongoing situation. Yasuke, filled with happiness and anticipation of reuniting with his family, moves joyfully through the forest. Eventually, he reaches a temple where guards inform him that his wife is inside. Suddenly, he hears his wife's agonized scream. Aniko, Yasuke's pregnant wife, is in the midst of labor pains. Yasuke rushes to check on her, but she seems more concerned about the blood stains on his uniform. Yasuke assures her that the blood is not his own and tries to reassure her that everything is fine. However, Aniko screams in pain once again. 
At that moment, a man sitting nearby initiates the sealing ritual, <coughs> causing the atmosphere in the room to shift dramatically. Yasuke's attention is diverted when he hears a commotion outside, with someone named Mugo being told to stop what he is doing. Loud banging sounds resonate from the other side of the thick door, signaling that something is amiss. Suddenly, a man named Mugo enters the room and informs them that the temple has been breached. Yasuke asks for an explanation, but Mugo's behavior and appearance start to change as he claims not to be late. Realizing that Mugo is not who he claims to be, Yasuke urges the others to hasten the ritual. Mugo starts moving in a manner reminiscent of the creatures seen in horror movies. His throat bulges unnaturally, and a hand eerily emerges from his mouth. Yasuke is taken aback, claiming that it's impossible. As a demon emerges from Mugo, it mocks Yasuke, explaining how easy it is for demons to infiltrate protected spaces by inhabiting human bodies. Yasuke asserts that all shinobi can resist such possession attempts and demands to know the demon's identity. Angered by Yasuke's persistence, the demon orders him to be silent, cautioning him not to confuse him with the lesser demons sealed in their devourers. This demon is from the sixth hell and is known as the Black Halo Demon. The demon's distinctive mark reveals its true nature, eliciting a sense of urgency among everyone present. They hastily create a protective barrier around Aniko. The demon finds it amusing and mocks them, thinking they are all foolish. It easily kills one of the shinobis by stretching its arm through a portal. The remaining shinobis, Aniko, and Yasuke are shocked by the demon's overwhelming power. The demon corrects them and expresses its dislike for being referred to as just a demon, claiming that it's an unflattering term. Feeling the imminent danger, the shinobis decide to abandon the ritual and run away. Yasuke quietly tells Aniko to escape while he distracts the demon. Worried about her husband's safety, Aniko warns him about the immense strength possessed by demons from the sixth hell and advises him to be careful. She then leaves, with Yasuke urging her to hurry. Yasuke swiftly maneuvers behind the demon, attempting to catch it off guard. However, his movements are anticipated, and the demon sends him hurtling through the air, crashing through a wall upon impact. The demon asserts that Yasuke is not its target. It scans the ritual site and realizes that Aniko has managed to escape. However, the demon remains unfazed, summoning lesser demons to track down Yasuke and Aniko sooner or later. These lesser demons scatter in different directions, entering the bodies of the deceased shinobis. As if possessed by a sinister force, the lifeless shinobis rise, resembling eerie zombies from thriller movies. The demon commands them to pursue Yasuke and tear the baby from Aniko's womb, specifically requesting Aniko's head to be separated as well. Out of nowhere, a tremendously strong explosion echoes in the background, startling the demon. The demon is taken aback as it witnesses the awe-inspiring strength of a crimson shinobi. Yasuke emerges from the rubles without any injuries, displaying his resilience. He fearlessly declares his intention to banish the demon back to the depths of hell. The demon begins discussing how the power of the Crimson Shinobis has weakened as time has passed. On the other hand, Yusuke raises doubts about whether surviving an assault from a black halo will earn him respect or if the demon is merely an exaggerated legend. In response, the demon boldly proclaims that Yusuke's wife, Aniko, will not make it through the night and is certain to die. However, Yusuke is aware of Aniko's capabilities, despite being in the midst of childbirth. He chooses not to involve Aniko in their conversation because he starts feeling envious. The demon stresses that Yusuke fails to grasp the impending event that is about to occur. Suddenly, the demon lunges forward, preparing to launch an attack, and asserts that the birth of Yusuke and Aniko's child will signify the beginning of the end. Yusuke takes a deep breath, raises his leg, and forcefully stops the ground. This action activates his secret ninja art rapid fire, a technique that releases balls of flames toward his adversaries. Unfortunately, the demon effortlessly evades all the flames by contorting his body in a peculiar manner. Mockingly, the demon dismisses the attack as feeble. However, Yusuke's initial attack was merely a diversion to prepare for his real move. He attempts to strike the demon with a flaming fist, but suddenly notices something and swiftly flips his body midair to avoid the demon's unexpected counterattack. The force of the demon's strike is so powerful that it creates a gaping hole in the temple ceiling. Acknowledging Yusuke's speed, the demon compliments his agility. 
Yusuke quickly replies with a mean comment, saying that the demon is not good looking. Feeling that there's something wrong, Yusuke immediately avoids the demon's attack by going through a portal. However, the demon doesn't stop and keeps trying to harm Yusuke. Luckily, Yusuke is able to skillfully dodge these unexpected attacks. To create more space between himself and the demon's arm, Yusuke jumps towards a wall that is close by. Unexpectedly, the demon experiences pain and withdraws his arm from the portal. He wonders how Yusuke managed to counterattack while successfully dodging his assaults. Gasping for breath, Yusuke activates another secret ninja art, Lightning Viper. This attack enhances the user's speed and envelopes them in electricity. Yusuke strikes the demon's chest with tremendous force, propelling him forward. The impact is so intense that it shatters the temple's pillars and pins the demon against the wall. As the dust settles, the demon remains motionless on the wall. Yusuke removes his hands from the demon's body and proudly asserts that no one has ever dodged his lightning viper attack. The demon questions the validity of Yusuke's claim. To Yusuke's astonishment, he discovers a shinobi on the wall instead of the demon. Whispering from behind, the demon ponders if this is how shinobis treat their fallen comrades. Enraged, Yusuke turns to face the demon but gets struck, causing his body to bend as he crashes into a nearby wall. With a farewell, the demon charges up his finishing attack. While leaping through the trees, Aniko hears a loud explosion and worries about Yusuke's well-being. At that moment, she spots a group of individuals pursuing her. These individuals are fallen shinobis who have been possessed and ordered to chase after Aniko. Thinking quickly, Aniko employs her secret ninja art to manipulate a nearby tree. As the demons pass by the tree, she activates Cursed Earth, causing sharp wooden spikes to protrude from the tree, which eliminates some of the demons in pursuit. However, Aniko realizes that there are still numerous adversaries after her. More agile demons, skilled in the ways of the shinobi, emerge from the treetops. Despite the chaos, Aniko's abdomen tightens, and she requests her unborn child to remain calm for the time being. Suddenly, explosions erupt behind Aniko, surprising her as she realizes that the demons possess the ability to employ secret ninja arts as well. It dawns on her that these demons are known as Crimson Shinobis, leaving her wondering what has transpired to cause their transformation. One of the demons launches an attack, aiming a knee kick at Aniko, but she skillfully blocks it. In retaliation, she strikes back, delivering a powerful punch that sends the demon hurtling through the air. As Aniko kneels down, she feels her baby kicking and implores the little one to endure the current situation. Suddenly, Aniko senses the presence behind her. Before she can react, a colossal attack detonates in front of her, propelling Aniko toward the edge of a cliff. Desperately, she manages to grab onto the cliff's edge and cling on for dear life. The demon-possessed shinobis appear, gazing down menacingly at Aniko. Overwhelmed with regret, she apologizes to her husband Yusuke. However, her despair is short-lived as a man, rushing to her rescue, activates a secret ninja art known as Phoenix Purge, obliterating the demon-possessed shinobis. Aniko looks up and recognizes her savior. It is the shinobi priest who had accompanied them during the ritual. Not long after, the sound of a baby's cries reverberates through the dense forest. Aniko, a mother, has just given birth to her child. Unfortunately, the priest is disheartened because he arrived too late to perform the sealing ritual. As a result, he believes that the only option left is to kill the baby in order to prevent the release of the fallen. Aniko gazes at her newborn with sorrow and argues that he is just an innocent infant. However, the priest insists that the baby's destiny was sealed when the other priest died, as two priests are required for the ritual. Overwhelmed with desperation, Aniko pleads for an alternative solution for her baby. Despite her plea, the priest instructs her to step aside and surrender the child. Meanwhile, the demon observes an amusement as he surveys the holes he created in the walls with his powerful attack against Yusuke, a fallen shinobi. He mocks the foolishness of those who dare to confront him while underestimating the might of the Black Halo. Suddenly, someone curses aloud, expressing his frustration at being proven wrong by his wife. The demon is left speechless as he witnesses Yusuke clinging to a shattered pillar, resembling the iconic pose of Spider-Man. He deeply regrets doubting Aniko's warning about the immense power of the Black Halo. Yusuke descends back to the ground and declares that he can now fight seriously, assuming that Aniko is no longer in immediate danger. 
Despite enduring the pain of each blow to his face, he firmly grips the handle of his sword and unsheathes an ordinary-looking katana. With determination, he proclaims that he will bring an end to the battle. Yasuke exudes confidence as he assures the demon that he will no longer hold back his strength. However, the demon harbors doubts and refuses to believe that Yasuke's devourer possesses enough power to vanquish him. As Yasuke concentrates his energy, the ground beneath him begins to sink, causing the temple to shake. His blades quiver with anticipation, displaying more eagerness than usual. Yasuke asserts that the negative energy emanating from the demon serves as a valuable addition to what his devourer has already absorbed. The demon becomes angry, urging Yasuke to cease his games and unleashing another lethal laser beam. Yasuke retaliates, asserting that it was the demon who initiated the game and now he will provide the entertainment. He takes a deep breath and performs a formidable maneuver known as the secret ninja art Heaven's Crescent. The crescent slash collides with the laser beam, successfully slicing through. The demon is taken aback by this counterattack, but manages to evade the slash, which effortlessly cleaves through the floor and walls. Frustrated, the demon launches multiple foreboding energy attacks from its fingertips, targeting Yasuke. Yasuke assumes a defensive stance, but skillfully leaps into the air, evading the demon's onslaught. The spot where Yasuke stood erupts, and the demon searches for his whereabouts. Seizing the opportunity, Yasuke seizes the demon's head and forcefully slams it into the ground, causing the temple floor to crack. This is the first time the demon experiences pain and coughs up blood. Yasuke drags the demon across the ground, resembling a mop, as he swiftly heads toward the temple's entrance. He hurls the demon outside, and it tumbles on the ground like a discarded bag of trash. Struggling to regain its composure, the demon attempts to stand, but Yasuke is already upon it. With a resounding scream, the demon unleashes an even more potent laser beam. Surprisingly, Yasuke redirects the trajectory of the laser beam, akin to misdirection in basketball. The demon is astonished to witness its formidable attack being effortlessly deflected. Yasuke bellows as he stomps on the demon as if squashing a fly. However, the demon manages to deftly evade Yasuke's devastating blow. At this point, the demon finally comprehends that Yasuke is no ordinary shinobi. Yasuke continues his pursuit, tightly gripping his devourer. Refusing to accept his current circumstances, the demon decides to erase the entire area. Assuming a pose similar to Kamehameha from Dragon Ball, the demon accumulates dark energy in its palms. This menacing energy materializes into a threatening entity fixated on Yasuke. Setting his devourer aside, Yasuke attempts to block it, fearing that the impending attack could destroy the surroundings and harm Aniko. He uses his bare hands to block the dark energy, prompting the demon to mock his audacity. The demon declares that the dark energy will consume all life in the vicinity. Despite the immense pressure he feels, Yasuke refuses to let his family and home come to harm. Gathering all his strength, Yasuke raises his arm and punches through the dark energy, creating a hole reminiscent of a certain bald anime character. The bewildered demon finds it inconceivable that a mere human could neutralize his negative energy through sheer determination. Trembling for the first time, the demon witnesses Yasuke's energy steadily intensifying. Yasuke surprises the demon by attacking with his sword engulfed in flames. Relentlessly, Yasuke continues his assault on the devourer, with scarce opportunities to defend itself. Observing the demon's attempt to gather energy in its chest, Yasuke swiftly recognizes this pattern. Adjusting his attack, Yasuke declares that he can now anticipate the demon's techniques. With precision, Yasuke stabs the demon's chest and activates his ultimate ninja arts. As Yasuke unleashes negative light, darkness overtakes the demon's body. A formidable surge of energy pierces through the demon, rendering it silent. Kneeling on the ground, the demon struggles to comprehend what just transpired. Curious about Yasuke's true identity, the demon ponders how such power could defeat Night Hand. Yasuke, taken aback by the demon's revelation, now understands how the demon discovered the temple's location. To provide clarity, since the demon's time is limited, Yasuke introduces himself as one of the nine clan heads, the highest ranking position in the Crimson Empire. The demon finally comprehends that this is the power that defeated Night Hand. Surprised by this revelation, Yasuke now questions how the demon acquired knowledge of the temple's whereabouts. 
Meanwhile, in a particular place that is located high on a cliff, there is a shinobi priest who is deeply involved in the process of preparing a very powerful ninja technique. However, he is feeling regretful and sorry about it because he believes that it is necessary to get rid of the baby in order to maintain the delicate balance of the world. Aniko, filled with desperation, pleads desperately and looks for any other possible solution. The priest, consumed by anger, demands that she move aside and let him proceed. Suddenly, out of nowhere, an enormous ball of fire comes hurtling toward the shinobi priest, completely surrounding him and reducing him to nothing but ashes. At that exact moment, Aniko hears the sound of footsteps getting closer. A group of shinobis, who are possessed by demons, have arrived and are determined to launch an attack. Aniko is fully aware that surviving this dangerous situation won't put an end to their hardships and challenges. She can't help but shed tears of sadness for her innocent baby, whom the Empire wants to eliminate. Aniko apologizes to Yasuke and begs him to protect their child, Sekiryu, on her behalf. As his wife, she doesn't want to force Yasuke into the difficult position of choosing between her and the Empire. With great determination, Aniko wields her powerful weapon called the Devourer, which is capable of inspiring fear and agitation among the demon-possessed shinobis. She sincerely expresses her heartfelt desire for Yasuke to use his full strength in order to safeguard the world. Aniko, firm in her resolve, confronts the demons and declares that she is ready to do whatever it takes to ensure the safety of her family. Suddenly, a massive explosion occurs at the top of the cliff, causing chaos and turmoil to envelop the entire area. The explosion occurred with an incredibly loud noise, and its power was so great that it could be seen from a very long distance away. Yasuke noticed the explosion and immediately thought that Aniko was responsible for it. Right at that moment, the demon he was engaged in combat with took advantage of Yasuke's distraction caused by the explosion and launched an attack, slashing his face. This resulted in blood flowing from Yasuke's left eye. In his attempt to retaliate, Yasuke tried to strike the demon, but the demon swiftly evaded his counterattack, skillfully avoiding it. Yasuke found himself unable to do anything but glare angrily at the demon, who was in the process of opening a portal. The demon fearlessly declared that this attack was just the beginning of the suffering it planned to inflict upon Yasuke's life, bidding him a malicious farewell. Additionally, the demon insinuated that it too had experienced the loss on that fateful night, implying that it wasn't the only one affected. The magical portal closed abruptly and disappeared completely as if it had never been there in the first place. Yasuke's thoughts were flooded with Aniko, and he mustered up the inner strength to move toward her. The weather suddenly underwent a dramatic change. Thunder roared loudly and rain came pouring down. In the midst of this eerie atmosphere, Yasuke stumbled upon a lifeless body. Strangely enough, there was a hair clip lying near the body that looked oddly familiar to him. He stared at the charred corpse, its head severed from its body, and his face became expressionless, devoid of any emotion. The overwhelming sorrow he felt made him hesitate to touch the lifeless figure, his hands shaking uncontrollably. Unable to contain his emotions any longer, Yasuke cried out his wife's name. His voice pierced through the air, blending with the sound of the pouring rain, as he clenched his teeth and unleashed a scream of indescribable anguish. In the meantime, we find ourselves at the headquarters of the Crimson Star Empire. Inside this place, there is a woman named Mizuki who is having a conversation with a young boy named Sekiryu. Mizuki kindly requests Sekiryu to go to sleep and rest. However, the curious and concerned Sekiryu, being young and innocent, wonders about his mother's whereabouts and if she is doing well. In response, Mizuki provides reassurance to Sekiryu, assuring him that his mother is perfectly fine and safe. She even makes a promise to Sekiryu, saying that he will get to meet his little brother the following day. Filled with trust and excitement, Sekiryu wholeheartedly believes Mizuki's words and eagerly anticipates the arrival of the next day. Fast forward to 13 years later, we find ourselves in a lively and busy city. Amidst the hustle and bustle, there is a young man who wears a bright smile on his face as he nimbly moves across the rooftops of buildings. Despite his cheerful disposition, the young man starts uttering words of frustration, realizing that he might not reach his destination on time. I asked this young man the son of Yasuke and Aniko. The prologue is done. Let us know if you want to watch the next part by commenting below. See you next time.